Hello everyone, it's Carrie again here with another really fun project using these Miss Ink Stamps products. Today I'm going to be making a Halloween card, but not just any Halloween card. I've got this Boo Crew stamp set. I'm going to use these critters and the jack-o'-lantern from that set. I have the Halloween sentiments set, which is one of my favorites still. I'm going to use this trick-or-treat and the Creep It Real stamp. And then I have this pumpkin spice gnomes. I'm going to use the pumpkin house for that one and they're going to go trick-or-treating and I'm also going to be using these easy lights. We're going to be making a light-up card. I had this in my mind for a long time and I've kind of set up the way that it's going to go so I know just how to stamp it. When you're stamping a card like this and you're doing some masking, you always want to stamp the, the items that are closest to the front first and so what I'm doing here is placing it in my misty picking up those stamps and peeling off those pump the pumpkin house so that I can stamp those critters in the front so normally what you'll do is stamp the front most critters and then mask them off and then you can stamp the rest of your items so I'm starting with that little ghost rabbit the ghost mouse and the jack-o-lantern now I'm bringing in some masking magic, which is going to help me mask those off. I just stamp onto those. It doesn't matter how, what this looks like. And then I cut those out with my scissors and place them right on top of each character. So you can peel off the backing. It becomes sticky then. It's like a little sticker, but you can peel this off easy later on. And so I'm gonna peel each one of those off and place them on all those critters. And now we're ready to stamp that pumpkin house. So I'll remove these other stamps from my misty door and then pick up that house and stamp that down right over those masked characters. I'm using my favorite Eclipse Black ink. This is perfect for Copic coloring and inking. So that's why I chose to use this. It also stamps a nice clear dark impression and it's become my favorite really quickly. So I'll stamp that down there, just like so, making sure I got all of those pieces. And now I'm going to ink on some clouds before I stamp on the rest of the sentiments. Now I already had a mask of this pumpkin house from a card I made earlier. And so I'm just gonna reuse it. You can reuse this masking paper as many times as it will stick. So you can see I've already used this a couple of times. I'm gonna use it again. So it's really great that you can reuse this. I have some weathered wood distress oxide. It turned out to be my favorite one for this card. I wanted to use something that was a little bit spooky, a little bit dark, but not too dark so that you, you could still read the sentiments that I'm gonna stamp down. So weathered wood turned out to be the perfect shade for this. So I just used my cloud stencil and now I'm going to ink on a little bit of green for the grass. I brought in a little bit of Twisted Citron. That was a little too light for me. So after I inked on that, I'm going to also bring in some Crushed Olive. And that's a darker, more olivey green. So I thought that worked a little better for the scene that I'm trying to create here. So I'm going to ink that on as well. I could add a little darker green, but I just chose to leave that as is because I really want these characters to pop. So now I'm going to peel off those masks and look at this. They all actually came off together. So we have our little scene here and I'm going to save all those masks and you can see that I like to stick them on the back of their stamps so that I know I have these masks already made. I can reuse them another time when I need them. So here I'm going to put this back in to the Misty. I'm adding the sentiment that says trick or treat and the one that says creep it real and that little spider image. He is holding some flashlights. <laughs> I think that's so funny. So I'm just gonna line them up on my grid line mat here, make sure I get them straight and then go ahead and stamp them down with the same Eclipse Black ink. I'm going to stamp them a couple times to get a nice dark impression. And there we go. 
So it looks like that spider's just hanging out in midair. Don't worry, I'm gonna add a little line so that he's hanging down, hopefully from a spider web. I was gonna draw a complete spider web, but I have to add something else to this. And so I didn't think I would have enough room. So I just drew a line using my T-square ruler and a black pen. And that will give you the impression that it's hanging down from a spider web, hopefully. <laughs> now I'm gonna test out some colors for this pumpkin. In my head, I wanted a purple pumpkin. And I told my husband I wanted a purple pumpkin. He thought I was a little crazy, but I have this vision of what it should look like. And so I'm testing out some colors. These ones are a little bit brighter. Now I'm gonna test out a darker looking purple. But what I thought was that this combination of purples was a little bit dark. So it looks more like a gray than a purple. So I decided to do kind of a combination of both of them. I'm gonna use the lighter purples for the doorway and the frame on the window but then I'll start with the darker purples on the pumpkin and then add one of the lighter purples. So you'll see. So watch this. I am just starting in with that really dark BV29. I'm adding some shadows where I thought the shadows might be along those lines of the pumpkin. Then I'm gonna go ahead and blend that out with the BV25. And I'm just going really slow, testing this out on this first panel, just to make sure I like it, first of all. Now I'm going in with the BV23 and then the BV20 and you'll see even though this has a hint of purple to it, it really still feels mostly like gray to me. So after I got this part done, I thought no, it needs to be a little darker and a little more purple. So I brought in some more of that dark shade I'm gonna bring that up a little bit higher and a little bit lower from this angle. Go ahead and blend that through with the next shade. And here's where I start adding, and there, there's that middle shade there, but here's where I start adding that brighter purple. Might be a little bit difficult to tell on screen, but it really brightened up the look just a bit, so enough so that it made me happier. <laughs> So I'm gonna blend all these through and I went through and colored the rest of it off screen because it did take me a little bit of time to get the shading just right, the colors just right. Now I'm bringing in that brighter BV13 for the door and also for the window or the trim around the window. So I'll bring in that brightness, there we go. And now I've got a dark collection of oranges. I needed this pumpkin to be dark orange similar to the darkness of the purple pumpkin because I want this to look like it's gonna light when it lights up it's like really gonna light up so we're starting out with some darker colors kind of bringing in the spooky foggy feeling so you can see I have the colors here on the screen it's E09, E08, E99 and Y17 for this pumpkin and I'll just color that through, blending all those sections. After I color it once over, once through, I do bring in the darker colors again to darken it all up. And then that center part where it glows is a brighter yellow color. And I colored that yellow color for the house as well, for the window and the window in the door. And here I am just darkening up that pumpkin a little bit till I am happy. Sometimes I go through a couple of times with the darker colors. That's gonna look just great. To color up the stems of both pumpkins, I'm bringing in some darker greens. These are kind of olive greens to match the olive green in the grass. And now I'm thinking about it, these would look great for some grass blades as well. So you can do that if you want to. This is YG. 99, 97, and 95 are the ones I used. I also have YG93 there on the side. So you can add that as well. This really makes for a great stem. It's the, a nice dark shade of olive green. 
I really like it for these pumpkins. I colored up the the smokestack off screen just using some cool grays and now I'm going to use those same cool grays on our little ghost critters. I've got this stamp set from Lawn Fawn that says push here and I'm going to use that or it says push me. Yeah this particular one says push me. I'm going to use it right above the spider to the right of his little string that he's hanging off of his web and so that is where we're going to press on the button to light up this card and now it's time to add the lights now you might think this is really tricky but it's not these are easy lights and I think this adding the lights took me way less time than even coloring up this panel and in the end I feel like it was so worth it so I'm just gonna break apart one of those sets this comes with five sets I've already used one of them so here's another one and you just slide in the battery and then you press it and it turns those lights on. Now this one has three sets of lights to it. So I'm gonna have one go to light up the house there just like that, one for the jack-o'-lantern and one for the window. Now this little purple button right here is the part that you press. So I'm trying to line that up directly with the spider because I want you to press on the spider to turn these lights on. And I'm just gonna tape that down just using some regular scotch tape, clear tape. You can use washi tape, you can use double-sided tape, whatever you want. Just tape that in place so it doesn't move. And then I'm gonna tape one of them to go with the jack-o'-lantern there. And I'm just kind of curling up these wires so that I can get them in the place that I want them. And then I'm taping them down. So each of those three lights will light up a different section of this card. And look at this, it's so cool. I just need to move this one right here to the window to be a little bit more over directly behind that window. There we go, that's better. So now to add this to our card base, you wanna use some foam tape. And this is some deep foam tape from Heffy Doodle. It's like double the width of a regular foam tape. And it's perfect because you can use this on these lights and it's not going to keep that button pressed down. You need to make sure you use double width foam tape. Now Pear Blossom Press also sells a double width foam tape that's perfect for these lights. So you can do that as well. So I added that all to the back of the card panel and now I'm attaching that to the card base. And look at this. You press on that little spider, you get the card that lights up. It is so cool. I'm turning off a light here, so hopefully it will show better in this video. It's really, really awesome. Here I went into the hallway where it's a little darker so you can see that light up effect. It's so cool on this card. I hope you enjoyed this project today with light up Halloween cards using these beautiful products from Missing Stamps. I had a really great time making it and I can't wait to share my next project with you. I'll be back real soon with more card making inspiration. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you then. Bye bye.